Hey everybody, Tina here with our Blessed and Beautiful Life. How's everybody doing today? I hope you guys are well. I'm just hopping on really quick doing a um, live recording. Well, I guess it's not live, but it's a recording with my phone. So um, I just wanted to show you guys, we've got some meat birds back here and I was back here feeding and watering, just kind of cleaning everything up and checking them out. Um, but we've got 24 meat birds that will be ready for processing um, in June. So we've had them for a little bit and we've lost a couple, you know, that's just how it is. Um, we lost a couple chicks the first couple days after we got them. Um, and then we lost one the other day, but that's just how they are sometimes. But we usually do pretty well with the meat birds uh, that we get from the hatchery that we order them from online. But let me turn you guys around really quick and show you these, these little chickens. <clears throat> so it's kind of not focusing because of the chicken wire. Okay, so we've got 24 and they're quite ugly, aren't they? <laughs> I always say they're ugly. She's looking at me like, excuse you, calling me ugly sister. But you know, they are missing, they, they just, that's how they grow. They're missing a ton of feathers and, but they're not supposed to be beautiful, right? They're going to be on the dinner table. So it doesn't really matter. Oh, I can't even focus in here. Anyway, so we've got 24 and we will be stocking the freezer pretty soon. And I cannot wait. We haven't had chicken in so long. Um, we've got this chicken tractor that Joe built not too long ago. Um, and we made it out of PVC pipe. So it's awesome because it's heavy enough that it won't float away if we have like a big windstorm, which we get a lot of those in Virginia. But it's um, light enough that we can easily pull it around the yard. And that's what we do. We have these little ropes on each side of the chicken tractor so we can just pull it. And every morning we come out and we move them to a new area. So they get fresh grass and lots of bugs and flowers and all kinds of goodies to eat which is, you know, their natural diet. So that's, that's the best way to raise them. But I don't know about you guys, uh, since this whole COVID pandemic has started, chicken is really hard to find in the stores. I mean, good chicken, right? I mean, I'm really picky about chicken. Um, cause I know like how it's raised and processed at some of these industrial farms. So, um, we haven't had chicken in a while. We've, we've got tons of beef still in the freezer and we have lots of pork from the farm. Um, so we're, we're, we've been good on meat, you know, but we are definitely a chicken family and we're missing the chicken. So I told Joe, we need to get some more birds. So we went on and we ordered the chicks and, um, went ahead and had them delivered because they're super easy. I mean, if you guys have never done meat birds, um, you only have them for like eight to eight to 10 weeks. You don't really let them live much longer than that or else the meat gets really tough. So you just need a, a nice pen to keep them in, some food and water, and um, they're good to go. And like, you know, like I said, eight to 10 weeks ready to process. So it's, it's easy. Um, and these guys, we are actually going to just um, keep them whole. We're gonna keep them as whole chickens and put them in the freezer like that once we butcher them and process them. We have you know, butcher them up and had breasts and legs and thighs and all that good stuff. Um, but this time we're not going to do that. I, we, we've kind of been on this kick, you know, before this whole quarantine started, but just throwing like a whole chicken in the crock pot or roasting a whole chicken in the oven. Um, but you know, you can shred the meat, you can make chicken and dumplings, you can make chicken enchiladas, I mean, all kinds of stuff. So just to keep it simple and make our processing day not so long, we're gonna butcher these guys and we're just gonna package them whole um, for those kinds of things. So, but I'm really excited. Have some fresh chicken, it's been a while. But anyway, how's everybody doing out there? Isn't this crazy what we're, what we're um, experiencing in the world today? I'll tell you what, I don't know what to think, to be honest with you. There's so many theories out there about what's going on. One day you hear this, the next day you hear that. One day they're telling us that we should be doing this. The next day they're saying, oh no, don't do that, do this. And it's kind of crazy. It's like, it's like you don't really know who to believe. So I don't know. What I do know is I don't like it. 
<laughs> it's like, I don't like it. I need some new flip-flops and I'm like, nothing is open. I was gonna go to a DSW shoe store and they're closed, you have to buy everything online. Um, so it seems like the only thing that's open anymore is Walmart and like Lowe's and Home Depot. Um, so it's just, it's kind of crazy. And you know, Lexi's, Lexi's uh, graduation is coming up soon. And she went to the school and picked up her cap and gown. And it's just like, she's like, so I just pick it up and hang it in my closet. <laughs> you know, they're talking about a virtual graduation for the kids. And um, I think she's just trying to wrap her head around that. So it's kind of sad. It is sad, actually. But what can you do, right? I mean, we don't really have any control over this. I don't know where you guys are at if your state's still shut down. Our governor is talking about starting, you know, phase one of reopening Virginia. Um, who knows what that's really going to look like, but it hasn't happened yet. So we'll see. Um, and in the meantime, we're still chatting with Jackson, um, our sweet, precious boy that we're in the process of trying to adopt. We're chatting with him um, about once a week, once every two weeks. We have like a Zoom video call. The boys got to play Legos the other day on video. That was kind of cool. So um, we're just, you know, taking it day by day and we'll see. So something else that happened the last couple days, you know, we have beehives. We've had beehives for a few years now. And in the spring, the bees like to swarm. And what they're doing is the colony is getting too big. And so they take about half of the hive and they leave and they go find a new home. So the last time that they did this, Joe was actually able to catch them and um, put them back in a hive and they stayed with us. So it was awesome. But we had um, two swarms in the last week and one of them, <laughs> the bees actually went up this tree here and they swarmed um, it was either this one or this one I don't know whatever but they swarmed up there in this huge cluster and what they do is um, they cluster there and they they protect the queen while they send out some scouts to go find a new place to live and that can take a couple hours that can take a couple days um, but Joe took a ladder climbed the tree cut the branch out of the tree and put the bees back in a new hive that he had put another box on so that they would have more room to expand. Um, and they decided to stay, so we're super excited. And then all of a sudden today, there was another swarm. So we've got two hives. Um, we saved the one, got them back, and then the other one swarmed today. And let me see if I can show you guys. I'm not gonna get too close. But they swarmed on the post of the fence and Joe actually was able to catch them and get them back into a new set of boxes. So let me see if I can turn you guys around. I don't want to get too close because I've been stung and I don't like it. You see that? So they're not going to stay there, um, but they had swarmed on this fence post over here. So Joe was able to get them into the boxes. So they're happy. Um, they've got more space. So this evening when they all go in and go to bed, we will um, safely with the cover of night, <laughs> when they are sleeping, we're going to be moving them over here where our other beehives are. So I like to keep them kind of off in the distance away from everything else. Uh, just because, you know, I don't, I don't want to get stung by them. And I've got, you know, Parker comes out here and plays on his trampoline and everything. And I don't, I don't want to have to worry about him getting stung by the bees. And for the most part, they'll mind their own business. They don't, they won't really mess with you, but um, still, it makes me a little nervous. So, and then we have these, I don't know. I know I posted a picture a couple weeks back, but we've got some new little ducklings that we bought. And... These are just strictly for pets. I just love ducks, you guys. And we had them at the farm, but we sold them all when we sold the farm. And I told Joe, I miss them. I miss them so much. So let me see, I'm gonna come into the garden. <laughs> hey guys. Look at these little lovelies. So I think what we have is a male and two females. 
I believe that the brown one is probably going to be a khaki Campbell. And we're not quite sure about these two. They're probably Pekins, but I'm not 100% sure. So we shall see. But I'm keeping them in the garden um, because I want them to be friendly ducks. The ducks on the farm, they wouldn't let us get anywhere near them. And I just love the ducks and I wanna pet them and I wanna love on them, but I could never catch them. So now that they're in the garden here, um, it's really, it's really helping them to become friendly because I'm in and out of here all day working in the beds. So they're super sweet, aren't you? So Parker named the boy Reno and the little, um, the female Pekin, I think they're Pekins. Her name is Lily. And then our little brown girl is Luna. Hi girls. Hi. <laughs> they're starting to lose their fuzz and grow their, their feathers. So they look a little rough right now, but they're just precious. <laughs> but anyway, um, goodness, my hair's all over the place. I had um, some appointments today and I got home and I've just been thinking about you guys and I know I haven't been on in a couple weeks. So I just wanted to step in and say hello see how you guys are doing, give you a little update on things and show the meat birds to you. I'm super excited about the birds, the chicken. When we sold the farm, we weren't really sure what we were gonna do. We weren't sure if we were gonna not do anything like this anymore for right now until Joe retires, like gardening and meat birds and things like that. But um, I, think, I think homesteading is like a mindset, if that makes sense. Um, I, I don't, believe that to be a homesteader you've got to have 20 acres and you've got to have a tractor and um, I just don't believe that I think homesteading is a mindset and I think that if you like to do things homemade and you like self-sufficiency um, you know working with your hands I think that you can do that anywhere so I, I quickly when we moved to this property I was quickly longing for those things that we had at the farm um, but obviously keeping it on a small scale until um, Joe retires. You know, that was the whole goal was to kind of take a step back and not be running around like crazy. Um, so that's kind of what we've done. But we've got the little garden. We've got the beehives. We've got the, um, we saw our chickens. And we just had a little broody hen that just hatched four chicks this week. And that was really exciting. She's such a good little mama. Um, I think they've all put themselves to bed already. So we, when we moved out here, we actually bought a dog kennel. We were kind of in a hurry because we were closing on the farm, had to get the birds moved over to the new property, but we didn't have time to build a coop yet. So what we did was just buy a dog kennel. And of course the chickens free range all day. So we just opened the door in the morning and they just free range. But I think they've all put themselves to bed for the night. Let's see. Yes. <laughs> Hello. Hello birds. Hey Blondie, what's up? There they are. You guys, chickens are the easiest things in the whole wide world to keep. We feed them, we water them, we give them shelter. They free range all day, they put themselves to bed at night and all we have to do is lock up the door. And really, in the spring and summer, they hardly eat any of the grain that we substitute. So they free range all day eating bugs and grass and all those goodies. And then let me see. Here's our little broody hen. Oh, look at that baby peeking out under her wing. You see him? So she is broody as can be. She doesn't want anything to do with the rest of the chickens. She never has. And um, every so often we go ahead and let her hatch some just because she wants to so badly. And I love having the chicks around, so I don't mind at all. But believe it or not, she's got four sweet babies burrowed underneath her feathers somewhere. And it amazes me how they all hide under there so perfectly. And she is appropriately named Little Red Hen. <laughs> Little Red Hen. She's so smart, you guys. And I guess I just... Um, 
I don't know, I'm, I'm fascinated by mother nature. You know, she takes them out every day. She's taught them how to free range. She's taught them where the water is. She's taught them how to get back in the coop at night where it's safe. And um, in the beginning, the first couple days, you would see her like every so often, she would go and lay somewhere and call her chicks over and put them underneath her. And it was like she was warming them up. And it was just the most precious thing, seeing little mama running all over this yard with these chicks, teaching them how to, how to do life. Sound familiar? <laughs> Are you laughing too? All right, guys. See you in the morning. Anyway, I guess I'll let you guys go. I just wanted to say hi, show you guys the meat birds, kind of give you a little update what's going on over here. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And I will talk to you soon.